Hey guys, this is Spencer again uh, with Safety Teams on Holy Ground. Uh, today's topic is going to be team recruiting. Um, this is just some ideas that you could put on a recruitment application form. Uh, I know a lot of churches, most churches, uh, it, you have a hard time recruiting people, finding the right people, whether it's you're not finding enough people uh, or you're just not finding the right people. Uh, so this is just a little um, kind of an application form or questionnaire. Uh, to ask um, to see if you can find the right people. Okay, on the on the questionnaire or the application at the top of it, you kind of want to do uh, you know just a brief description up top, uh, something to the point of uh, our safety security team is currently seeking assistance as we move forward in our goal of protecting those who attend our church and providing a welcoming atmosphere to those who are visiting. Please take a moment to complete this questionnaire and return to a team member or staff member as soon as possible. Uh, we would like to know any of any medical skills, law enforcement, security, military, or previous safety team experiences that you have may have as well. Um, and you can go a little more in detail if you'd like. Maybe you're just starting a team up. So you say, hey, we're trying to get a safety security team together. Uh, or you're expanding, you're growing, your church is growing, your more members are coming in. Uh, you know you had uh, maybe 100 members last year, and this year you bumped up to 200, so you need more team members. Um, you've got more people to watch, so you need more eyes. Um, so this is just a suggestion of something to put up top. Of course, the basics you're going to want on there, you're going to want name, contact numbers, um, and then get kind of detailed depending on what your uh, building and grounds look like it kind of detailed in those questions so uh, if you need a parking lot attendant you need to ask you know would you be willing to help provide presence on our parking lots and greet members and visitors providing assistance as needed uh, if it's a large parking lot you may need somebody to run a shuttle uh, and I would also have them part of the safety team because uh, things can happen there as well you have a car coming through uh, sees a group of you and they try to run you over or they approach you as you're riding down uh, so I absolutely uh, suggest having an armed presence or an armed person on that shuttle. Um, also ask, uh, would you be willing to help provide presence uh, inside assisting members and visitors as needed, you know, inside the building? Because uh, some people may not feel comfortable with doing the inside or the opposite outside. Some people may want to be inside. Some people may want to be outside. Uh, so kind of split it up. Uh, if you've got a couple buildings, uh, you know, you've got, um, I know a lot of them have the, like the children's church that's in a total um, separate building. You may want to ask that, say, hey, would you be willing to provide assistance over in the children's church? Would you be able to provide assistance over in the building C uh, or whatever building it is? What, where would you be willing to provide that assistance? Or do you want to do it in the main sanctuary? You know, maybe their family's in there and they'd rather be close to their family. Um, they may just want to be one of the and ears that sit with their family but uh, don't mind looking around so that's kind of questions you can think about and put on there as well um, a few more questions of uh, when would you be able to assist you know Sunday morning Sunday evening if you have those services other services uh, if you have you know Wednesday evening services uh, or if you have like uh, Tuesday morning services or uh, Bible studies uh, Saturday morning Bible studies uh, weekly monthly special events um, stuff like that. Maybe if there's a wedding, would they be willing to do that? Or a lazy, ladies' day, would they be willing to sit in the camera room, um, you know, or escort the women in and out? Stuff like that. Um, those are things to ask because not everybody is going to be willing to be there all the time. Uh, you're going to have a couple members that have a little better free time, uh, so they'll be able to do more stuff. Uh, but you're going to have some that just aren't going to be able to be there any other time but Sunday. Uh, whether that's morning or evening, or maybe they could be there Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday, but they can't be there any other time. Um, you know, we've got work lives, we've got family lives, and a lot of guys out there uh, between work, um, two, you know, two parents working basically anymore. Uh, if you've got that, the, the parents don't hardly see each other, and they don't hardly see the kids. And then uh, I, I understand that church is the family, but uh, they want to also spend some quiet and private time with their families, uh, so they may only be willing to do it on Sunday mornings. Um, so that's things you need to ask. You need to be understanding of that as well. Um, but if they are willing to do it on a service, don't turn them down right away. 
um, because you may find them useful in that Sunday morning or in that Sunday evening that they're willing to do um, and they're willing to give assistance. Uh, and most of you churches out there are going to need all the assistance you can get. Uh, so take advantage of when they're willing to do it. Uh, and, and again, don't write them off because they can't do it all the other times. You know, they may have uh, jobs that they're on call or they may just work so much. They just want to be with their family. Uh, so take that into consideration when you're considering somebody, uh, their application. Um, ask them about medical experience, you know, get detailed with it or tell them to get detailed with it. Um, you know, do you have or you know, you want to know if they're doctors or nurses or the EMTs or paramedics, first responders, are they CPR certified, AED uh, certified? Now, uh, most of your not basic CPR, but a little up from basic CPR are both CPR and AED certified. Um, I know that there's the layman CPR that they give you a little certification and that doesn't cover AED. Um, but ask them, are they both? Uh, do they have any other basic medical training? Um, do they have any kind of first aid experience? What what kind of experiences do they have? Um, and again, those are things you want to pay attention to because if you got this uh, EMT in the building that's willing to help out on Sunday services because that's when he's there, uh, or when when his schedule is, check out his schedule because you know those guys work crazy hours, uh, but he's willing when he's there. Uh, get his schedule and then put him on uh, staff. Put him on the medical staff when he's there. Uh, but have it on the calendar. Say, hey, you know, Johnny's going to be over here. Um, he'll be here these days, so we can we can expect Johnny to be here. And then ask him to let let you know if he's not going to be there in advance, so you'll know that uh, he's just not uh, not showing up. Um, so that way you've got all your ducks in a row, and you know what to expect, and you know who's got your back uh, in any kind of experience uh, or whatever, um, wherever they're at. Uh, you know, if they're on the safety team doing security uh, procedures, uh, you'll know that that guy's going to be out. So you need to step him up, step somebody up and replace him if you can, uh, or the medical as well. You know, you're not going to have the EMT on staff. So uh, now you go to somebody else that it may not be their week, um, but you need them to fill in uh, and have all that uh, again on the calendar and scheduled out uh, so you can have your ducks in a row and you can make this uh, thing run uh, like a more well oiled machine. All right. You also want to ask any uh, safety team, security function experience, you know, were they military, law enforcement? Do they have any kind of security background, whether armed or unarmed? Uh, do they have any kind of safety team experience? Uh, and then, you know, ask, uh, you know, if they have military, how long? What was their MOS in the military? What did they do? Uh, law enforcement, how long would they do? Because um, somebody says they're just law enforcement. Well, there's all kind of law enforcement out there. So, you know, find out, get details. Um, Security officers, were they armed, were they unarmed? Did they just sit in a booth the whole time? Were they loss prevention asset protection? That makes a huge difference. Um, your loss prevention guys uh, are good eyes and ears, uh, and most of those guys had to do a lot of con confrontations. Um, they would have to watch and see something, and, and their confrontation was to, to head it off. Uh, so they would go in and try to de-escalate situations before they happened, um, and that was their job. Uh, so those guys would make good safety team members. Uh, and of course, your law enforcement, military, but don't look, don't overlook just security guys. Uh, these guys did the same stuff, just in different ways. Um, just because they weren't actually uh, state certified law enforcement doesn't mean they didn't get in entanglements with people. Uh, do, do, that doesn't mean they didn't have to detain people to have them arrested, which is all you're going to be doing is detaining them to have them arrested. Uh, if needs be, that that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be uh, detaining and maintaining them uh, either until the police get there or EMS get there. Um, so don't don't write those guys off. People with concealed weapons permits, um, they may be interested. Maybe they haven't ever done it before. Um, and I know a lot of guys look at it and you follow the world standard right now. It's like, well, you know, you've got to have 10 years of schooling. Um, this person just graduated. It's like, well, you got 10 years of schooling, but now you need 10 years of experience. But then you get that 10 years of experience. Oh, you're too old now. Uh, don't write somebody off just because they're interested. They don't have experience. That's where you find good people. Uh, get them in and train them. Um, make them an apprentice. Um, I'm a huge fan of apprenticeships. If you train them right, um, you, they don't need all the schooling. They don't need all that stuff. They don't need all that background. We all started somewhere. So that's things you need to consider. And yeah, uh, it takes a little more time to, uh, 
uh, train them the way you need them, train them the way you want them. Um, but it may be your best asset you got once you get them trained. They will, may do everything you need them to do. Uh, so don't just write those guys off that, hey, I just got my CDP and I'm really interested in helping out. Okay, cool. What can you do? Um, what are you willing to do? Uh, what kind of training are you willing to do? Uh, and get them trained. Show them the ropes. Uh, and this is a big one. Um, a lot of people that see safety teams or security teams or law enforcement or uh, whatever, uh, not as much law enforcement. Uh, and the military, uh, there's a lot of people that go into the military not expecting to see any kind of action, not expecting to see any kind of war. Uh, and it's the same thing with law enforcement. Some of these guys are expecting, well, I'm just going to be a road cop that pulls people over. Well, yeah, you're going to see some action. Uh, the same thing with security guys. I, I've had a, uh, in my years of working uh, loss prevention asset protection, we had a lot of people interested. Uh, so we would interview them. And this would be one of the questions be like, look, if the situation were to go down, uh, are you willing to engage uh, the person, whatever it is, and use whatever force necessary to subdue them, to detain them uh, until the police get there? Uh, and I will be honest with you, 80% 80, 80 of our applications said, absolutely not. I'm not touching anybody. It's like, oh, you're not the person for that job. Uh, now, they may not be willing to engage, but they may be medical and they're willing to help out the wounded. Um, or they may be uh, willing to help the safety team and not touch, hands off, but they may be eyes and ears. So don't just scratch them off because they say, no, I'm not willing to engage. Um, Look at them, see if they're good eyes and ears. You can train them for that. Uh, and they just may, may be a good uh, set of eyes. Uh, so again, don't just write them off because they're not willing to get into that fight. Um, they may be willing to usher people out if needs be. Uh, so that's things to look at. Not everybody uh, is going to engage in a fight. Not everybody, even the ones that might engage a fight, not all of them are, are going to engage an active shooter. Uh, and not everybody needs to. You need that handful of people that will, uh, but you also need that handful of people that's willing to, if there's a fight going over here, to start getting people away from that fight, keeping people out of the way. Uh, you need those people as well. Uh, so you can work in harmony as a team. Uh, and pe other people aren't trying to jump into that fight. Uh, they're holding people back, getting them out of the way so that you can handle what you need to handle. Um, and the fighting and stuff, you know, we'll go over that in another one, but. Uh, what we always went by is force plus, plus 10%. So whatever force they were using, uh, plus that 10%. Uh, again, somebody can't uh, slap you and you pull a gun on them. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Um, and that's where the security training, uh, the, the security side training needs to come in as well. Uh, and then leave a good bit of room for questions and comments. Um, some of the stuff we would just went over, some people will be happy to escort people in and out of the building. Uh, they'll be happy to take wheelchairs out to pick people out up. Um, you know, you'll have, they'll be happy to go out to the vehicles as they get wheelchairs out, put the people in the wheelchairs, wheelchair them in uh, as the other people go park their vehicle, uh, but they won't want to do anything else. Uh, and then you're going to have people that want to be the eyes and ears. And they want to be the gunman, if you will. Um, and that's all they want. They, they want to keep the place safe. Uh, so you need to know that you need to be know there'll be some that'll be willing to do every aspect of everything. Um, there'll be other people that will not. And you need to know what they are willing, what they're not willing to do. You need to have it in writing, especially you team leaders. You need to have that in writing uh, so you can look and say, OK, uh, Johnny over here, he's willing to fight, shoot, uh, greet people as they come in. Uh, he does not want to do the parking lot. OK, if at all possible, I'll keep him out of that parking lot uh, and just work with him now. If it push comes to shove and you need somebody in the parking lot and he's the only one, uh, you could probably go ask him and say, hey, dude, I'm sorry, but I need you to work the parking lot today. I don't have anybody else. And he would probably be like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Uh, so that you just need good questions and comments um, from people, get what they're thinking, what they would like to do. Uh, and then you can sit down and talk with them and say, well, this is what it's about. This is what I need. Um, you know, if you just want to be a set of eyes in the auditoriums, that's cool. We'll train you. Uh, and then we'll train you how to get in contact with us and stuff like that. Um, again, this is just some basic questions that you need to ask. Uh, there are other stuff you can do. 
uh, or other questions you can ask depending on uh, how big your property is, how many buildings you have. Uh, so think of those questions and throw them in there as well. Um, all right, guys, I hope this helps you out. Uh, this is Spencer Defense Training. Stay safe, stay armed. Please like, subscribe, and comment on this video below. Thanks.